Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Jodie Lee. And welcome back to Lesson 3, Tuesday. So, um, today we are picking up where we left off yesterday. Um, Moses, for the last two days, has been preparing the Israelites to be able to kind of still follow God even once he's long gone. Um, and unfortunately now he has passed away and Joshua, in Joshua 1, is taking over from Moses and leading the Israelites. Um, and the topic for today is about obedience and God's law and how um, we can prosper by obeying God's law. So can you turn with me to Joshua 1, verse 7 and 8? It's just two verses, so it's not very long. Um, and Brandon's going to read it for us. Yes. But my phone is taking long. There we go. Cool. 7 to? 8. 7 to 8. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Thus, you will be prosperous and successful. Okay, so basically, God is talking to Joshua, and he's saying, um, you got to go get ready to cross the Jordan with the Israelites, you their new leader. But here's like my words of wisdom. Be strong and courageous, okay, which is always a cool way to start. Um, and then he basically re reiterates it twice, right, so that he must keep the law. He says, um, obey the law. And the second thing he says is meditate on the law. So um, obviously you need to know the law and understand the law and to be able to obey it. Um, and that's kind of what I get from meditating on the law, making sure you're thinking about it all the time, right? Um, so the lesson kind of touches on the fact that if you keep the law, you will prosper, right? Which is a concept we're not really used to. Um, we more often think, like we think of like prosperity gospel and stuff, yes. um, or when we think of in terms of the world, um, the world often thinks you kind of need to go off on your own way. You need to kind of ignore God's um, laws if you're going to actually prosper. And that's not what God's saying in the Bible, right? But this prosperity, the lesson doesn't touch on, on it too much, but um I don't think it's always necessarily the type of prosperity that the world is like telling you. Yeah. I think if you obey God's law, you're not automatically going to become rich or something. Rich and famous. Yeah, but I think if we look at the commandments that God gives us, I do think you will probably have a better life if you stick to God's commandments. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't go killing people, and I mean, I know I always use that one as an extreme <laughs> example, but doing a lot of those things usually come back to bite you. If you well, steal, if you kill. The thing is, um, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with the prosperity gospel in that it teaches that you will be blessed. And there is a heavy emphasis on financial gain, but there isn't anything even wrong with that because God can. He, he's the, actually the only one with the real power to bless you uh, financially. All blessings mm. come from God. Um, but the problem is when that's like the only way that yeah. we believe that we can be successful in life. And the reality is when we look in the Bible, King David, King Solomon, uh, uh, Joseph, oh. Joseph, all these guys were extremely successful in a worldly essence as in that they had all the wealth that the, that the world had like at their disposal. They were super rich. They had everything they wanted. Um, and, and they were blessed. Mm. But there's men like John the Baptist <laughs> who were extremely poor but counted themselves heavily blessed, you know, that they were more than content, more than happy, and they didn't want, they didn't desire anything more than Jesus Christ. And mm. that's what it really means to be a Christian, is to have peace, joy, and happiness. And uh, you don't need money or mm. financial blessings in order to have those things. Yeah, it's like God can give you the peace and the comfort no matter what He's yeah. called you to. And for some people, that might be to be wealthy yes. and use that wealth for Him. Um, so. But do you do you want to be rich and unhappy, or would you rather be poor and happy? I'd rather be poor and happy. But if I can be both, that's also cool. <laughs> um, but basically... Uh, this, that verse to me is just reminding us that sticking to God's law is what God has called us to do, and He will be with us if we do that. Um, and I think I like the lesson. Uh, it touched on the fact that um, in the world's perspective, we think we need to like, um, yeah, use all these tools, like you know, being sneaky or um, being innovative, which is a good thing. But we need to use all those things to prosper. But what God's saying is actually, you have a whole lot of other resources at your disposal, i.e., God, right? And if you stick with God in the way that He wants us to live our lives. Um, he can be with you in every day, and like that's a way more powerful resource than whatever the world um, has to offer. So that was kind of the first part. Then there's a whole bunch of verses which I challenge you guys to go read. In Romans 12 um, and Romans 14, they talk about how when you keep God's commandments, it's not always going to be an easy ride. Like people aren't going to always like you, and that's spoken about in Revelation. But then I want us to read Romans 1 verse 5 together. Um, it's quite a, a beautiful verse because it summarizes again 
uh, the context of this law. So we believe we're saved by grace, right? Um, we don't believe we have to keep the commandments. The lesson kind of says that if you keep them, you'll prosper. But I don't think it means that if, you know, you have to keep them to be successful because as we just discussed, you can keep them and still not be super rich or super successful, right? Um, it kind of comes back to why we keep the commandments. So let's just read Romans um, 1 verse 5. So Brands, can you read that for us over there? I sure can. Through him, we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith for his name's sake. Okay, so that verse talks about how um, Jesus gave them the grace and apostleship, so basically called them to be apostles, apostles, sorry, to call the Gentiles to obedience. Okay, but where does that obedience come from? Faith, right? So it all comes down to Jesus is the one that's giving them the calling to go reach these people, and Jesus is the one that's giving these people the faith and ability to obey him, right? Um, so it's not, it's not... Uh, that he's calling them to go save them by keeping the law. Um, it's that Jesus is calling, uh, is calling us to go reach out to others, to, to introduce them to this way of life, that sticking to God's law and sticking with God is going to give you a better life. Um, but ultimately, Jesus is the one that saved you. So then let's just read James 2, verse 10 to 12. Sorry, there's a lot of verses today, but there was even more that you guys can go check out. Um, and they were all very interesting. Um, Okay, so this kind of touches on the importance of keeping the law. So, yeah, can you read it for us? 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Yeah. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but uh, do murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Okay, so that was the extra verse there. And it's quite Oops. a difficult, no bonus points, it's quite a difficult verse to talk about because I think often we like to focus on um, the law is irrelevant, uh, we don't have to keep anymore because Jesus saved us, and Jesus did save us. But that verse is saying that God did write down those those commandments. He wrote them down in stone, right? Um, he wasn't... He wouldn't have written them for nothing. Um, and the way I understand them is that they are there as good instructions for us to live. It is wrong to kill. It is wrong to commit adultery, right? God wouldn't have said it was wrong if it wasn't. And Jesus dying for us, our sins doesn't make it right all of a sudden to go do those things. Those are still things that we should not do, right? Um, what it does mean, Jesus dying for us, is that when we mess up, as we probably do, hopefully you don't go kill people, but remember God, Jesus even raised the standard higher. When you do mess up by thinking bad thoughts or whatever, um, Jesus will cover you, right? But those things will destroy your life. So we should try and keep them because it's going to help us have a better life. Amen. So that's how I understand like keeping the law results in you prospering. I feel like all those things are great guidelines for how to have a better life. Um, and so, yeah, I encourage you guys to go look at the Ten Commandments in the context of salvation by grace. Um, I have a blog on it, and Fathoming and Following, you guys can go check it out, um, where we look at the commandments in the context that we don't need to keep them because we're already saved, but actually it's really good advice from God um, and good yeah, and good commandments from Him. So, yeah, will you pray for us quickly? Amen. Heavenly Father God, Lord, we thank you for giving us a set of rules and laws that aren't here to uh, favor you, but to look after us and to keep us safe. Rules and laws, Lord, uh, commandments that are actually blessings to us that uh, keep us safe, Lord, protect us from other humans who would otherwise uh, do us wrong, Father God. Help us to meditate upon your law and to uh, think about it and see how we can apply it to our lives in order to help mold us into better Christians, Father God. And Lord, we thank you that uh, you died for us, that we don't have to die because of our unfaithfulness towards your law, Father God, but that we may have mercy and uh, life and life abundantly. We pray this in your wonderful and holy name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye.